Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 27 of my fitness database series. Go watch parts 1 through 26 if you want to know what this is about. But it doesn't matter if you care about fitness because the point is I'm building a database. So lots of cool database stuff. Now in yesterday's video, just like every good 1960s Batman episode, I left you with a cliffhanger, right? I, I should have done the whole cliffhanger thing and I wasn't thinking at the time, but it, you know, that would have been really cool. Anyways, right? Macro function, the before update or the validation rule is preventing the database from saving the data in the field. Hit debug. What's going on? Well, the before update event, Actually, I, I should ask first, did anybody solve this between yesterday and today? Anybody? Did you give it a shot? Or are you just waiting for me to tell you? If you want to give it a try on your own, that's the best way to learn this stuff. Stop the video right now and go try to figure it out. All right? Okay, for the rest of us lazy people, here's the thing. The before update event is good for doing validation, right? Checking to see stuff. You can save things in other fields just not the field that you're working with, okay? So the before update event is the wrong place to put this. You cannot change the format or anything else, right, of the field that you're trying to validate. So this needs to go where? What happens after the before update event runs? After before update, the value gets saved to the table and then the after update event runs and there you can make changes to the value that the user just changed. Okay, that's the trick. So we're gonna cut that out of there and then we're just gonna come over here and switch to the after update event. And now in the after update event, I can change it. I can apply that format. That's all, very simple solution. Just, you just gotta know that, right? You can't change the field that you're working on in the before update event. All right, save it. Debug compile, well, don't need to debug. See, sometimes it won't give you the debug compile option, even though you made some changes. It depends on how weird access is being that day. There it goes, okay. All right, ready, save it. Let's move over back to here. Let's close it, open it back up again. And now if I try to change this to 5 p.m., it works just fine and it applies that filter. Uh, if you want to save that after that, you can just throw a little me.dirty in there, right? Where are we going here in the after update event? Right after making that change, you could say me.dirty equals false, and that'll save that value. Or you could keep editing if you want to. Right, 5.30 p.m. Okay. All right, so that's pretty good. That, 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 was, that, that was pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look at our table, what's in the table right now, see? Table is getting those values as we edit them, and it's just times just for display. All right. Now, what happens if they decide to change this to a different date? What we have right now will allow it, right? If it's, if it's a time, it assumes it's this date and adds the, the, that date to it. If, if the user types in a full date, that works. So if I put in here, let's say uh, August 5th at 6 p.m., hit tab, okay? That's actually in there. And if you check breakfast cereal, uh, let's move this over so we can see it. Breakfast cereal is this guy. And it is, it got August 5th at 6 p.m. But that's not very intuitive to the user here. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna go to that date if it's a different value, right? So right here, if it's a different date, go to that date, okay? What we'll do is we'll compare just the date portion of whatever they type in down here, right? With whatever date is in this field, compare it to this date. And then if it's different, we'll just go to that record. We'll, we'll update the filter to show that day. All right, so if the date value, which means just the date part of food date time, if that's different from the date value of log date, and as of right now, nothing is preventing the user from typing in a time portion on that log date. We'll fix that too in a minute. I thought of that. There's nothing to stop them from coming up here and putting a 9 p.m. after that. And, you'll, and you won't see it, but the data just won't work. <laughs> so we'll fix that in a minute. Okay? 
So if those two date portions are different, then we're going to say log date equals date value of food date time. It's the, it's the date that you want to go to, what they just changed it to, update filter. And if. Okay, so save it. Close it, close it. If I come in here now, if I change this to, let's put it on August 1st, August 1st at 8 p.m. Ready? Boom. And now it moved to August 1st. See that? Let's put it, some, let's put it on another one with some stuff in it. Let's go to, uh, what's, what do we got here? Uh, let's put it on August. Let's, let's fix some of this. I'm just going to cheat here. August 10th, August 10th, August 10th. Okay. So we got three items on August 10th. All right, let's go over to it and see. Okay, August 10th, let's go back to that other one on August 1st. All right, so if I come in here now and say August 10th at 5.45 uh, p.m., ready? Boom. See? It changed it to that date and then it put you on that date. Because that, that makes a lot more sense. And while we're doing that, how about we highlight that item too so it's sitting right here. Eh? We could do that with our little uh, our record set find first stuff that we did before. See, we're learning all these little tricks that we can now start putting everywhere else in our databases, right? So if that was the case, so in here now, now see, here's the problem though. We have to we have to take note of what item we're on first before we do that because as soon as we change this and it updates the filter, it's gonna go to a new record. It might then be sitting on a different record as soon as that requires. So we have to take note of that ID, okay? So what we gotta do is before we, let's see, before we update the filter, all right, we set the log date, that's fine. Right here, I'm gonna dim ID as a long. It's a temporary variable we're gonna use just once. ID equals food log ID. So I know what record I'm on right now, okay? We're gonna update the filter. That's going to requery the form. And now we just want to move to the ID that we just saved. Me dot record set dot find first food log ID equals that ID from a second ago. All right, and we'll put in here, move focus to that record. Okay, save it, debug compile once in a while, come back out of here. Now I'm going to, now we got to, let's cheat again. Let's, uh, let, well, just do this. Let's move this guy to uh, 8, 9 at 4 p.m. Okay. There's only one record there. Let's move it back to 8, 10. 8, 10 at 11 p.m. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's going to move to the end of the day. Ready? Go. Oh, let's see. It's, it's still sitting on that one. Um, And these aren't sorted, right? We don't have a sort in this. Let's see. Design. I was expecting it to go to the end. Let's see. Where's my data? Order by food time text. Ah, that's a problem. Food time text, we can't. We got we to gotta order by food date time. In fact, we might want to stick that in the code in the onload event because I don't like relying on these form properties. It's so easy to accidentally change them. So let's set that in the onload event of the form. We already have one. Where is it? Here it is right here. Log date equals that. We're going to set that first. We're going to say me dot order by equals food date time uh, me dot order by on equals true that'll that'll make sure the form is sorted by that when it loads no matter what happens at, at design time okay all right save that close it close it now we got to do that trick again all right one more time where are we at eight ten okay so let's just start moving stuff ahead of day. And you can make little buttons if you want to, to move these things around, if you want to change these dates automatically. I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, I was thinking maybe for the members and as, as an extended cut, a lot of days, especially when I'm dieting hard, I eat the same thing like three days in a row. So it'd be nice to just click a button and go copy today to tomorrow. <laughs> we probably are going to do that. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, we haven't done an extended cut this week. We'll do that for the extended cut. We'll make a button down here that'll copy all of these items for one day. Because a lot of the times I'll be like, okay, what did I have yesterday? I'll go click and I want to move this to today's date and just copy all those items. I mean, you could, no, see, no, you can't now. You could not do copying this. It's probably not going to copyright. 
Let me try it. I, I'm pretty sure it won't copy correctly. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's not going to work. Because it's, the fields are going to... Yeah, see now. But that's okay. We're not. I wasn't planning on being able to do that. What happened in the log? Yeah, see, nothing happened. Because it only copies the visible records. It'll only copy that text file. So you're going to get an invalid date behind it. But we'll do it. We'll do it with a little bit of code in the extended cut. But where were we? Oh, yeah, we were testing moving this stuff. All right. So now notice it's all sorted properly. So let's just move. I'm going to move it in random order. So we're going to move this to tomorrow's date. So this is going to be 811, which is actually today's date. 811 at uh, 5 p.m. Okay. Now let's move something after that. Let's move this guy to 811 at 11 p.m. Boom, and we're sitting right on it. Okay. Let's put something between those. 6 p.m. Let's move this guy to 6 p.m. 8, 11 at 6 p.m. Boom, sitting right there. And we forgot to put our conditional formatting on everybody for our bright yellows. I like the once I start doing that, I want to make sure I do that for the whole database. So this, 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 and this. Everything that's a tab order or tab stop. That and that. I'm not going to do this. This guy is different. All right. So format, conditional, put in uh, field has focus, yellow. I do like that bright yellow for the, the focus field because it, it stands out then. Save it, close it, open it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, just playing around with tab order. We got to take those things out of the tab order. It's up to you if you want to leave Eaton in as a tab stop or not. I think I will leave mine in. I'm going to take these out of the tab order because you can't change those, right? So you might as well take them out of the tab stop. Mm, nope. Save it. Close it. Close it. And this is just a little stuff that you just discover as you're working with it. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, one more thing. I want to int this date because, like I said, there's nothing stopping the user from doing this, and then it just doesn't work. You're, you're seeing some of the stuff that's after 9 p.m., but that's we don't want that in there, right? We want this to be just full dates. Real easy fix around that. We're just going to use the int function. It just chops off the, the fractional portion. So in the after update event, before updating the filter, log date equals the int of log date. Yes, I know it's a long integer, but they shouldn't be that big. Int is a is a function that chops off the fractional component. So now, if they do that and come in here and put in 9 p.m., the database says, no, you don't. <laughs> it still goes back to midnight. And someone's beaming in. I'm tempted to do this and turn these off because people that are familiar with access might think they can do what I just tried to do a minute ago and copy and paste, and it's not going to let them. So I'm thinking we turn these off, but we're going to have to make our own delete button. And I'm also thinking we turn this off, because if a user does this and turns off the filter, now they'll just see everything and they won't know what date stuff's on. So I'm going to go with both of those options. I'm going to go into here. We're going to turn off record selectors. Where are you? Format, duh, uh, record selectors, navigation buttons, and the scroll bars, I'm going to make vertical only. All right. And that means now we're going to need our own delete button, which I prefer anyways. In fact, we'll do, um, we'll do, oh, wrong, wrong one. We'll do, we'll do the uh, delete, add new, and require buttons just so that they are consistent across all of the forms. Maybe we'll stick them down here because we really don't need a big notepad like that. And I got some stuff going in here soon. So there we go. So that sounds like a great idea for an extended cut. We haven't had one this week. We're going to put a button somewhere down here. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. That's why I just got this image here. Uh, we'll make a button. We'll click on it. It will copy all of those items to another day. Uh, the default date will be today unless you're on today's date. Then it'll default to tomorrow. Because a lot of times what I'll do is for like today, I'll just go back a day or two and see what I want to copy. And then I'll just pick that and it'll copy it to today. But if I'm already on today, I might be wanting to copy today to tomorrow. So we'll figure it out and we'll copy all those items and everybody will be happy. And that'll be in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases and everybody gets some free lessons and everybody's happy. And you can use the forums on my website and I got awesome moderators that help with all kinds of stuff, and it's just, it's a cool place to be.
But that's going to do it for part 27. What is today? Today is Thursday, the 21st of August, 2025. Tomorrow is going to be a Quick Queries Friday. So we will pick up on Monday, the 25th. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.